Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Makoto Man at YouTube with a, another modeling video. Today we will be reviewing and trying for the first time the Laywood D3 Flex uh, wood material for 3D printing. Um, this product may have already been used, tested and whatnot out in the community. It shall be uh, put through a up mini 3D printer. The specs that I purchased, which wasn't too expensive, but if you go by the kilo, it is a premium product. Uh, 250 grams, 1.75 mil. Uh, the directions that I've got from the 3dprinter.com is approximately 180 to 235 uh, temperature. I'm going to be printing on the build tack, so I'm not too worried if uh, the specs of the heat bed is proper or not. Just uh, consider it like ABS, and we shall have a bit of a run. The story behind this filament is is about 40% um, of this is made up of uh, recycled pulverized uh, wood dust and mixed with uh, polymer and plastic and whatnot. It's uh, quite flexible, we'll take it out of its bag and should feed through a 3D printer. It was designed for the Ripraft line of 3D printers and should work in similar. I reckon with the modifications, the heat mod and the build tack, we should be able to run this through. I would like to do my mini helmet stands and uh, see if I can get a light wood color which is printing at 180 degrees and you can get a dark wood color which slightly burns it at 230 ish let's have a play now some uh, plastics can be quite brittle I'm afraid of that and even though it's got an interesting grainy texture it's extremely flexible doesn't have a tendency of uh, kinking and whatnot it feels kind of uh, soft so I'm gonna cut it open um, and feed it in now, interestingly enough Unlike ABS PLA, I was concerned that there was no reel for it, and uh, just undoing it, it doesn't really want to just spring out and unravel, so that's pretty impressive. I hope that it just uh, pulls and uh, feeds through. I am currently extruding, so it's extruding the last of um, my um, ABS, and um, we're pushing out uh, the laywood. It's a, a light, uh, lumpy colour. It's a bit strange looking. As soon as it's done extruding, we'll pull it out and have a little look, a little feel. It's pretty sick how it's just merged with the um, ABS. No problems. Did not struggle to push through whatsoever, so I don't see uh, clogging issues being a problem. I don't know if we'll get soft and jammed or not, so... Um, I'm not too sure if we're going to keep the uh, thing closed or open. Um, I'm going to extrude a bit more to make sure there is no ABS and we shall see how we go. Now it's laying onto the build tack. I'm a bit concerned because the grip is nowhere near as good as if it's plastic sticking to this material. <clears throat> I think it's um, because the plastic feels quite gritty. And that build tack is also a gritty surface. Might not work out, but so far the first layer has gone down without a hitch. We're going to wait for a few more layers, and if a few more layers goes alright and it doesn't start to lift, we will have a model. It's just something to be a bit wary of. Here is the laywood prints, as uh, promised. Now they still have their rafts and supports. We'll demonstrate the removal of those to see how well it goes. And also with the fail print that happens to be the side, we shall do a test of uh, how flexible and breaking points and whatnot. Uh, the color is very good. I love how you get the choice of the two colors from uh, temperatures. Uh, the print was not that great. There's a few holes. It's a bit rough. I'm very interested to remove the supports and uh, sand her down a bit to see uh, what it looks like in a sort of semi-finished uh, bare state. So here's the failed print and we can see that it almost looks like a bit of a biscuit. It's uh, very very soft, very very squishy, quite flexible like that was still on uh, the reel. Um, even at sort of a thick print, it's not very strong. 
it uh, breaks, it flexes, it's not um, really suitable as a component for um, something that's structural, operational, or uh, requiring any uh, tension. Being soft for decorative purposes, it means it's super easy to work with. So, removing the raft is just insanely easy. It's so soft, it uh, sands very, very quickly or cuts very, very quickly. And with the supports, they just uh, rip away so easily. It's not funny. And we can see underneath that um, it's roughly as uh, hollow and has all this uh, sort of almost a basket weave as the base. So it's uh, very easy to uh, clean up with something like a bit of an exacto knife or whatnot. Now, after removing the supports and sanding and cleaning up, these are what the two look like. It's not too bad. It's not amazing. Um, as a novelty thing, it's fine. As a scale modeling thing, a bit disappointed. The low temperatures come out okay. Um, the high temperature, even though the brand is lovely, it's very disappointing. There's potholes and all sorts of things. So I'm not going to do that again. We'll attempt to experiment. I want to see what happens when I add uh, wood putty, uh, fill in some of these holes, sand it back. And I'll try uh, shellac and some other uh, wood staining products to see if I can seal it so it wouldn't get stained and messed up with um, general use, as well as if it will improve the look. But so far, all I did was use a knife to remove the supports, and I used 300 grit sandpaper dry to sand it back to somewhat smooth consistency. Uh, it looks a lot better further away than uh, close up. The light one did get snapped in half uh, with a bit of wire and PVA glue. It glued together quite strongly. So on the right, I shellacked the uh, light wood colour one. And it's come out of this lovely darkish brown. Uh, almost as uh, dark as uh, the one printed at a higher temperature. A few more coats would achieve that. To the left, uh, the really dark one, I covered it in wood putty, sanded it back and it's a light colour. I'm going to give it a few coats of shellac so it's darker. If you wish to keep the original colour, just give it a few uh, clear coats and uh, it's all good. You don't want it stained or anything. And here is the two examples done. It was a bit of work. Um, I don't think lay wood is as simple as print out wood and you've got a piece of wood. It's the consistency of cardboard or like a biscuit. It's very soft, very frail, very, very easy to break. Um, the texture, I'm not too happy about. The fill, I'm very not pleased with. It reacts well to wood putty. I was able to use uh, wood putty to uh, fill um, all the holes and whatnot. And you can see the one on the left, just timber mate. The one on the left uh, looks pretty nice. Uh, the one on the right has no uh, fill, but it's sort of got a bit of a, bas a basket texture. Uh, just a last roundup. The one on the right is the low temperature one. Um, came out of light wood. I just sanded it, put one coat of shellac. Looks quite nice. It's presentable enough for me. The one on the left was the darker one. It came out quite brittle. It had really big holes and gaps. Uh, very easy to snap. Uh, I filled it up with bog, I sanded it back quite substantially, I gave it three coats of shellac to hopefully darken it. Uh, they both definitely have their characters. Uh, at first I did not like it when I printed it out, but looking at it now, it looks quite appealing. Unfortunately it is a bit of a novelty product uh, for modelling, there is not a lot of uh, applications as we can paint and recreate wood effects in um, painting and colours and finishes. What this is good for, besides my helmet stand project, is uh, bases and uh, just trivial stuff. It's, uh, it's nothing really special. I don't know if it's worth the hassle, but as a novelty, it was fun. I've enjoyed it. I could say I printed in laywood. It's not really wood. It's quite flexible. It's practically cardboard. 
Uh, it's good to see that uh, the putty, which is made up of uh, wood dust and polymers, um, also reacted nicely to the shellac. But uh, it is definitely worth uh, polishing up and uh, treating it with whatever timber treat product you got laying around the house and just going full hog. I mean, if you're going to buy such an expensive filament, and it is an expensive filament, you may as well just go full ball and see what happens. Now, comparing it with just uh, a 3D printed stand by my Cubone project, it does look a lot more appealing. It gives it a different texture, a different surface. Uh, definitely enjoying it. My whole spool will be used pretty much just to pump these out to continue my helmet skull collection. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, until next time, Stay tuned for more 3D printing videos, tutorials, reviews, uh, all sorts of interesting content. Uh, as always, uh, comment section is interactive, happy to answer questions. Check out my Facebook, uh, regular content there, and we'll sign out. Have a good one.